Hello students, welcome to YouTube channel Learn with Gisela. In this video of number systems, we are going to take up three questions that is question 1, 2 and 3 of NCRT exercise 1.5. So let's start with the first question. Now first question is classify the following numbers as rational or irrational. So these are the following numbers which we have to classify whether they are rational or irrational. Let us take the first question 2 minus root 5. Now 2 is a rational number and root 5 is an irrational number. The difference between them together forms an irrational number. We can say 2 minus root 5 it is an irrational number. Now we have a difference of two irrational numbers 3 plus root 23 minus root 23. Now plus root 23 and minus root 23 will cancel. We are left with a rational number that is 3. So it's a rational number. Next is 2 into root 7 and 7 into root 7. Root 7, root 7 stand cancel. We are left with a rational number that is 2 by 7 because it's of the form P by Q. Now we have 1 upon root 2. 1 is a rational number. Root 2 is an irrational number. So basically we have a quotient of rational and irrational which is an irrational number. Now fifth question 2 pi. That is 2 is a rational number. Pi is an irrational number. So it's a product of rational and irrational. So combination of it we are saying that it's a irrational number. Right? Now second question is simplify each of the following expressions. So over here we have first question 3 plus root 3 and 2 plus root 2. Now if you observe they don't resemble any of the identities. So we can use binomial into binomial to solve this product. So first of all 3 will be multiplied to whole of 2 plus root 2 and then root 3 will be multiplied to 2 plus root 2. So let us start 3 into 2 plus root 2 in bracket and root 3 into 2 plus root 2 in bracket. Now to solve this bracket we will multiply each term which is outside with each term which is inside. Right. So root 3 will also be multiplied over here with 2 and root 3 will be multiplied to root 2. So 3 into 2 is 6. 3 into root 2 is 3 root 2. Root 3 into 2 is 2 root 3 and root 3 into root 2 is root 6. So this is our final answer. We cannot solve further because uh, no like term we are having over here. Right. Now let us move to second part 3 plus root 3 into 3 minus root 3. So this resembles our identity 3 which says a plus b into a minus b is equal to a square minus b square where a is equal to 3 and we can say b is equal to root 3. So accordingly we will put these values of a and b in the identity a square minus b square. So first is a square a is, a is 3 so we will write 3 square minus b is root 3 so root 3 whole square. Right now 3 square is 9 square of root 3 is 3 9 minus 3 is 6 so 6 is the answer. Now let us take up third part we have square of root 5 plus root 2 now this resembles our identity 1 which says that a plus b whole square is a square plus b square plus 2ab right where a we can say it is root 5 and b is equal to root Right, exactly it is same as identity 1. Now we will put the values of a and b in the identity. So first is a square and what is a? a is root 5. So root 5 whole square. Then we have b square. So root 2 whole square. Then we have 2 into a into b. So we have 2 into a that is root 5 into b that is root 2. Now square of root 5 is 5. Square of root 2 is 2. Now 2 into root 5 into root 2 is 2 root 10 because root 5 into root 2 is root of 10. 5 into 2, 10. Now further simplify 5 plus 2 that is 7. 7 plus 2 root 10. This is the answer. Now let us move to fourth part. Root 5 minus root 2 into root 5 plus root 2. Now this resembles a minus b into a plus b. Same identity as we have done in part 2. Same identity we are using 
just a difference of interchanging the positions of minus and plus here it is a minus b into a plus b which is same a square minus b square over here a is root 5 and b is root 2 now put the values of a and b in the identity so we shall get square of root 5 minus square of root 2 square of root 5 is 5 square of root 2 is 2 so 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 so 3 is our answer right now question 3 says recall pi is defined as the ratio of the circumference say c of a circle to its diameter say d so over here we can say pi is equal to c upon d this seems to contradict the fact that pi is irrational how will you resolve this contradiction now there is a contradiction with pi why because on one hand we are saying pi is a ratio of circumference to the diameter that's why we write pi is equal to c upon d which is a rational number why it is a rational number because we can write it in the form of p by q now suppose i say my circumference is 2 pi r and my diameter is twice of radius so if i divide circumference by diameter i can write 2 pi r divided by 2 r so 2 and 2 cancel r and r cancel i am left with pi which is an irrational number because when you will solve it you will get a non-terminating non-repeating decimal expansion so it's an irrational number so we can say 2 by r upon r is pi which is irrational number so on one hand we are saying pi is a rational number because it can be written in the form of p by q on the other hand we are saying pi is an irrational number because its decimal expansion is non-terminating and non-repeating so why it is so because over here i can say either c or d or both of them are irrational numbers that's why pi is coming irrational number because we know when we divide irrational number by a rational number we get an irrational number or we divide a rational number by an irrational number we get an irrational number or we divide an irrational number by an irrational number so we will get an irrational number so any of these three combinations we will get an irrational number so that's why either c is an irrational number or d is an irrational number or both of them are irrational number and therefore we can say pi is an irrational number right so this is it children hope you have understood all these three questions related to exercise 1.5 in case of any doubt you can always write to me in the comment section Thank you everyone. Have a great day ahead. 